everyone. In this lesson, we'll see uh, how we Hispanic, Spanish speakers use the gerunds and uh, the relationship between gerunds and the English present perfect. Because in Spanish, for the present, we have only uh, in the whole conjugation of verbs what we call presente, and that's all. For example, for the first person, uh, puedo, estudio, I can, I study, camino, I walk. We, uh, in Spanish, we only have this in the present, the verb conjugated in tiempo presente, always speaking about the indicative mood. Um, in English, you have the present perfect that grammatically is similar to what we call pretérito perfecto compuesto. But as you may see from this word, pretérito means past. So, um, semantically, in Spanish, we don't find any, we don't find any difference between what you call in Spanish what you call what you would call uh, the simple past and the present perfect. We can say uh, to communicate something that happened in the past. Yo comí ayer. I ate something yesterday. And we can even say, yo he comido. This is our grammar similar form to your I have eaten. This would be your I have eaten. But in, in Spanish, we can say, yo he comido ayer. And it doesn't make any difference. So, as for grammar, it coincides with English, but as for meaning, it doesn't convey the same meaning at all. Because in the present perfect, you know that you're talking about an action that started in the past. And uh, some time ago, no matter when, and the situation in the present is the same as when it started. I mean, the action hasn't ended yet. It's still the same in the present. In Spanish, it doesn't mean that. And in fact, in Argentina, we always use this tense. And we seldom use this in, in Argentina. In the rest of Latin America and in Spain, they do, but always meaning this. They all mean that they mean the, the same. But uh, what about gerunds? There is a way in Spanish, uh, especially for you uh, native speakers of English, for whom uh, the present perfect is so important because it means another very different thing from the thing from the simple past. In the simple past, you you're talking about an action that started sometime in the past and finished in the past, many 100 years ago. And whereas in the present perfect, you uh, convey the meaning of something that I said before that, for instance, I don't know, this is 2010 and this is the present. We can be talking about an action that uh, started in 10, 2010 and is still taking place. So in the present, the situation as regards this action is the same. Whereas, whereas in the simple past, you talk about facts that finished sometime, maybe 2011, 2015, etc. 
In Spanish, um, we use, as I said before, both uh, pasado, I mean, in Spanish we call it pretérito perfecto simple Pretérito perfecto simple is what you call simple past. En pretérito perfecto compuesto, what I explained uh, some minutes ago. As I told you, in Spanish, we use it, we use either of them to mean the same thing. We don't make this distinction with this tense that takes the auxiliary verb haber. to have one of the translations of to have uh, apart from tener is haber. This is our auxiliary for this tense. But the interesting thing uh, that I suggested in the title of this video is that we can convey the same meaning that you do with uh, by using the your present perfect by using our gerunds with us with two spe with one specific verbs uh, as for gerunds i'm going to explain three cases uh, using a different verb for each one uh, and i will leave for the final part of this video the classical I am eating now, what are you doing now? Because it's the most obvious uh, use of the gerund in Spanish too. We do it with the verb to be uh, with its translation into estar, not ser, remember. But I'll ex explain what I consider um, more interesting uh, first. See, si. it's a verb in Spanish that uh, you can use to express the, uh, that you can use in the same way, way, way sorry, as you do in English with the present uh, perfect that is the verb venir Um, the meaning of venir, if you look up the word in the dictionary, is to come. It's exactly the same meaning. Someone makes a movement towards me, so he's coming towards me. In Spanish we normally say, viene a mí in the simple present. It's not necessary that do that we use the gerund in that case. We can say está viniendo a mí, similar as the present continues, or viene a mí, that it would be your simple present. Venir means to come, but no one will tell you, even el diccionario de la Real Academia Española, Española the RAE dictionary, won't tell you that venir is used many, many times in Spanish as an auxiliary verb. It's not considered an auxiliary verb. But actually, it works as an auxiliary verb to convey the same meaning of the present perfect in English. This is the use that I want to explain now because this is more obvious and it's not, and it's not the, the topic in this video. Uh, um, on the one hand, well, we are going to uh, conjugate it in the present. It's irregular, so we make this. Yo vengo, it ends with the typical O for the first person in the singular in the present, but 
we don't say venio but vengo we add this g or g tu vienes well we make a different here él ella viene nosotros nosotras venimos vosotros vosotras venís ustedes en ellos ellas both vienen and the formal second person usted that will coincide with this one usted viene uh, as for gerunds what happens with gerunds in english do you remember the three Possible endings in Spanish for the infinitive ar, er, ir. Well, if the verb, no matter if it's regular or irregular, if the verb ends with ar, the ending for its gerund, what we call this gerundio, gerund, gerundio, its ending will be ando. So, Caminar, to walk, to walk, caminando, amar, amando, etc. <clears throat> um, then, if the ending is either er, er, or ir, it will be yendo, comer, comiendo, to eat, eating, comer, comiendo, volver, volviendo, to come back, volver, volviendo, seguir, siguiendo, eh, morir, muriendo, vivir, viviendo. And uh, there is a peculiarity that happens with this ending. If the root ends with a vowel, in, in Spanish, vowel and vowel sounds coincide because we pronounce every letter. So, for example, caer means to fall. Eh, traer means to bring. Let's see other vowels. Uh, Sorry, it happens with this and with this one. Oír, to hear. Um, then we can say, um, leer, to read, etc. Et In these cases, it's not yendo, but yendo, with, uh, with a Y. I mean, <clears throat> especially in Argentina, in Uruguay, we say yendo, yendo. Phonetically, in Spain, it will be the same, and in the rest of Latin America, caer, cayendo, traer, trayendo. I mean, it won't be the E sound. It, in, uh, strictly, it will be this sound, the semi-vowel U. But in Argentina, it's uh, your sh sound. Uh, so, uh, to make, to convey the same meaning that you do uh, with the present perfect, for most, most cases, there will be exceptions. For example, if you say, I've never been to Mexico, you won't use this verb. In those cases with I've never, I've always, have you ever, in those cases we won't, we won't use this verb, but in, in others we will. So, so it will be very useful for you English native speakers and for people who speak English fluently 
to use this verb venir that that in that uh, which means to come but to use it as in as an oh sorry as an auxiliary verb to build up the most similar thing to your present perfect. Uh, so the first verb that will be the auxiliary, let's say, I mean, I repeat, it's not considered an auxiliary verb, but here undoubtedly it functions, it works as an auxiliary verb, because uh, we'll see when we put the germ here that it doesn't indicate a direction as in the verb to come. It's, it's just an auxiliary verb to indicate that something started in the past and the situation is the same up to the present. The same as uh, I have studied for many years. Uh, what you mean by saying that is that you started studying something in the past and up to the present, you go on studying. This is what we uh, use the verb venir to with the gerund. Uh, so, as I said uh, this, now let's see the, um, the verb estudiar, to study. To study. Estudiar means, uh, ends, sorry, ends with ar, so we'll follow this model. Estudiando. Vengo, vengo estudiando hace muchos años y no apruebo nada. As if you said in English, I've studied for such a long time, for so many years, and uh, I never passed a test during this time when you began studying up to the present you never passed or you've never passed a test vengo estudiando hace muchos años for many years y nunca and never and I've never aprobé un examen passed a test tú vienes estudiando well as the gerund, the same as in English, will be the same for each person. It's, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't change. Uh, let's use other verbs so that you see other meanings. So similar to, to what you mean by using the present perfect. Tu vienes comiendo It may mean literally that you come, that you're coming, walking uh, towards me, and at the same time you're eating. This would be the original uh, meaning. But uh, as for making the present perfect, it it uh, it gets another meaning. Tu vienes comiendo, uh, for example, you've been eating. For so many years, and you never wane, uh, uh, gain weight. How come that you never? How come you never weigh, uh, How come you never gain weight if you've if you've been eating and eating and eating since many years ago? In Spanish, vienes comiendo hace mucho tiempo, since a long time ago, and you're still. Y todavía sos delgado, and you're still skinny, flaco, not slim, skinny. Um, because the, the contrast is stronger. You keep eating and eating and eating and you remain skinny, uh, too thin. Él viene mm, pintando as it comes from the infinitive pintar, that means to paint a room, a wall. Uh, this is the verb pintar. 
él o ella viene pintando su cuarto y no termina más. He's been painting his room and never ends. The rooms, uh, his room uh, is still, uh, looks, uh, still looks like uh, it used to do. So, is he painting really? Uh, nosotros venimos sintiendo. The, um, sintiendo. The meaning, the, the infinitive is sentir. As you may see, it's irregular because we do this. We change the E for an E. Sintiendo. <clears throat> so this means feeling. Venimos sintiendo un dolor muy fuerte que no se nos pasa. We've been feeling, we've been feeling a very strong pain that doesn't stop. It started last week and up to now we are still feeling that pain. Vosotros venís, let's see with, the, with this ending that I told you, yendo. Vosotros venís leyendo y no aprendéis nada. You've read, you've read for many years, uh, you've read for many months, and uh, up to now you haven't learned anything yet. That's the meaning. Venís leyendo y leyendo y leyendo. You've read and read, or you've been reading and reading and reading. Y hasta ahora, and up to now, you haven't learned anything. No habéis aprendido nada. And finally, with these pronouns, vienen... Mm, vienen... Uh, 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 let's say vienen oyendo, from the verb oír, to hear. Ustedes, ellos, ellas, vienen oyendo ruidos extraños todas las noches. Es algo muy misterioso. Uh, they've, they've heard... Um, they've heard strange noises night after night, every night. They, they won't stop, they don't stop, so it's a big mystery. What are those noises that we are still hearing at night and we are sure that we'll hear them tonight? So this, um, so this no one will tell you this, no book will tell you this, but uh, undoubtedly the verb venir is working as an as an auxiliary verb as an auxiliary verb here exactly in the same way that you have in your present birth so how how do we uh, build up the sentences in these sentences in spanish Uh, without losing uh, their original meaning. If you want to mean something in English and you want to translate the same meaning into Spanish because we don't have the present perfect by using the verb venir. So, I've read many books. You know that it means uh, in my whole life I've read many, many books since a specific time up to the present, in your whole life. How, so how, according to the conjugation, how would, how do you think that we'd say this in Spanish? Um, by keeping and keeping at the same time the same meaning. 
Vengo. Leyendo. So we'll always use the gerund in Spanish to mean, to keep the meaning. Because in English, just by using the present perfect, it's enough. Sometimes you'll use the past participle, participle, others the past participle of the verb to be, uh, I mean, to indicate the, the um, present perfect continuous, and then the ing form. But in Spanish, we, uh, to, to convey the same meaning as that in the present perfect, we'll always have to use venir plus gerund. Venir más que nunca. Vengo leyendo muchos libros. This means the same. Uh, for the last time, for the last months, years, I've read many books or I've been reading many books. You've bought too many things. Vienes comprando Demasiadas, demasiadas, uh, demasiadas means too many in the feminine form and plural. And things, we say cosas. Vienes comprando demasiadas cosas. I mean, the person who's saying this to another person is angry and um, he or she uh, means with this Um, you don't have enough money to buy so many things, so why, why do you keep on buying them? You've bought too many things from the past up to now. Vienes comprando demasiadas cosas and you don't have enough money to afford, to afford them. Uh, she's been learning languages for the last five years. So according to our conjugation, the one that we saw some minutes ago, um, it, it's like this. Viene aprendiendo idiomas desde Los últimos, en the number 5, 5, años. Eh, años, sí. Learning viene aprendiendo. Learning means, ap aprendiendo means learning. Idiomas, languages. Uh, you use the preposition for, we use desde, well, uh, like uh, since. And you have to add a go at the end. Desde the last, los últimos cinco años. The last five years. As in Spanish, año is masculine. The adjective last and the article, los, uh, have to coincide in gender. Um, well, uh, I won't give you examples uh, for the plural pronouns because the mechanism is just the same. It's exactly.